Okay, so good morning, uh, my dear students. Welcome to our uh, virtual class. Uh, before I proceed, may I request uh, everyone to mute your microphone to avoid unnecessary noise and distractions and uh, turn off your video as well. And please observe uh, proper behavior during our virtual class. Okay, so um, I am Maria Anasi Robles, your online learning coordinator or your OLC. I am one of the faculty members of uh, College of Arts and Sciences at AMA Malolo City, Bulacan. Okay, so uh, for our uh, course code, we have here uh, UGRD Eng uh, 6240 for 21 13 and this is contemporary literature with literary criticism. And our topic for this um, morning is the part one of elements of fiction. Okay. And for our course, uh, or rather uh, learning objectives, we have here at the end of the discussion, we will be able to uh, uh, explain what literature is, then differentiate prose and poetry, fiction and nonfiction and uh, identify and explain the basic elements of fiction, okay? So these are our learning objectives, okay? Now, uh, let us uh, review what literature is, okay? So uh, the word literature, is derived from the Latin word or Latin term litera, which means letter, okay? So it has been defined uh, differently by various writers. Now this is the origin or the etymology of the word literature, okay? Uh, now some writers interpret literature as any printed matter written within a book, uh, written within a magazine or a pamphlet. Now others define literature as a faithful uh, reproduction of man's manifold experiences blended into one harmonious expression. Okay, now because literature deals with ideas, uh, thoughts and emotions of man, uh, it can be said that literature is the story of man. Uh, man's loves, griefs, thoughts, dreams, and aspirations coach in beautiful language, which is called literature. Now, uh, liter literature should have theme, okay? And uh, it should explain uh, the relevance of the theme and it should have a compelling idea should have a good style and correct grammar, and it should sound genuine. So these are some of the qualities of a good literature. Now, uh, last time we discussed the two main divisions of literature, and these are prose and poetry, okay? Now, uh, let us differentiate. Now, in terms of form, Prose is written in paragraph form, wherein poetry is written in stanza or verse form. In terms of language use, prose is, exp uh, is expressed in uh, ordinary form, making use of sentences and paragraphs, whereas poetry is expressed in met metrical, rhythmical, and uh, the use of figurative language. Okay, in terms of appeal, uh, prose appeals more to the intellect or more of the mind, uh, whereas poetry appeals more to the emotions or feelings of both writers and the uh, readers. In terms of aim, prose aim is to convince, to instruct, 
to imitate and reflect. Whereas uh, poetry is to steer the imagination and set an idea of how life should be. So these are the two main divisions of literature. Now, um, these divisions of literature can be fiction or non-fiction. Now, fiction, as we all know, is a made up or imagined story. So it is not true and it does not exist in the real world like fantasy, like fairy tales, legends, myths, and others, okay? So uh, most of the stories, novels that we, that we have is fiction, okay? Whereas nonfiction, it is an account of a subject which is presented as facts. And this is based on truth. So nonfiction exists, it is real, and mostly based on true to life story, which includes essays, articles, textbooks, manuals, encyclopedias, and others. Okay, now, what are the elements of fiction? So what are the elements of fiction? What makes up the fiction or fictional stories? Okay. First, we have the setting. Okay. Now, uh, setting has something to do with the place and time or the where and when the story happened. So uh, place has something to do with the geographical location, uh, meaning to say where is the action of the story taking place or happen or uh, time. When is the story taking place? Is it historical period? What time of a day? What time of year and others, okay? It can also be weather conditions. Is it rainy, sunny, stormy, and others, okay? For social condition, what is the daily life of the characters like? Does the story contain local color or uh, which focuses on uh, speech, dress, mannerism, customs, and others of a particular place? And then also uh, mood or atmosphere of the story. So uh, it has something to do with the feeling created in the story. Is it bright? Is it cheerful? or is it dark or frightening? So this is the setting, okay? And then we have another element here, which is the characters. Okay. Now character is a person or sometimes even an animal or inanimate objects who takes part in the action of a story or a piece of literary work or of a fiction. So we have the what we call main characters, those who are most important in the story. And then we have also minor characters who usually static or unchanging in the course of the story. Now characters, uh, uh, there are different kinds of characters. First, we have characters according to principality. We have the protagonist and antagonist. Now, protagonist is the character with whom the reader empathizes. Usually, the protagonists uh, are the lead characters, okay? They are uh, lead star, okay? Or lead stars of the story. Okay, and then the antagonist is the character that goes against the protagonist or the villain or the villainess in the story. So do you want to be an antagonist or do you want to be a protagonist? And then we have uh, another one, characters according to personality. So we have round character, which is a character that displays 
different or multiple personalities throughout the story. And we have another here, flat. It is a character that reveals conventional traits who remains the same throughout the story. Okay, so round and flat. Okay, now uh, author or the authors and writers make use of a method, okay, to reveal the personality of the character. And this is what we call characterization. So again, character, uh, characterization is the method used by the writer or by the author to reveal the personality of the character or of the characters. Now, the characters are revealed according to one, actions of the character, second, thoughts of the character, third, descriptions of the character, Next, descriptions of the other character, and then descriptions of the author. Okay, so these are, uh, are how the characters are revealed. Okay, now uh, characters are revealed to us by means of the following techniques. Okay, uh, like physical appearance. Uh, names of the characters, what the narrator tells about them, or what other characters says about them. And then another element here is the plot, okay? So we have the setting, the um, character, and we have the plot. So the plot is the sequence of events in the story, in a story or in a play. So the proper sequencing of events. Now it can be linear plot, wherein it moves with the natural sequence of events where actions are arranged sequentially from first to last. Or it can be circular plot. This is a kind of plot where linear development of the story merges with an interruption in the chronological order or with linear plot to show an event that happened in the past, okay? So there is an interruption of uh, event that happened in the past. And then in Medea's rest, it is a kind of plot where the story commences or starts in the middle part of the action, okay? Now, uh, there are five stages of a plot. There is an introduction or the beginning of the story where the characters and the setting uh, are revealed. Okay, so that is the introduction story part or the beginning part. Then we have the rising action. The rising action is where the events in the story become complicated and the conflict in the story is revealed, okay? And then after rising action, we have the climax. Uh, this is the highest point of interest and the turning point of the story, the climax. So in here, the reader wonders what will happen next, whether the conflict will be resolved or not. And then after the climax, eventually the falling action where the events and complications begin to resolve themselves. And the reader knows what has happened next and if the conflict was resolved or not, okay? And then finally, the denouement, the final outcome or untangling of events in the story or the end of the story. So these are the five stages, okay, of a plot. So as you can see here, the pyramid, uh, the pyramid pattern of a plot. So the exposition or the beginning, the rising action, then the climax or the turning point of the event, 
in the story and then uh, the, the falling action. Okay, and then the denouement or the untangling of events, right? The, the end of the story, okay? Then we have the conflict, another element of a, uh, another element of fiction is the conflict or the conflicts. Conflict is the opposition of forces which ties one incident to another and makes the plot move. Actually conflicts or problems or challenges uh, idea uh, or this makes the story more exciting to the readers okay and then there are two major types we have the external conflict it is a struggle with the force outside oneself of the character and then the internal conflict it is a struggle within oneself of a person who must uh make some decision overcome pain quiet their temper resist an urge and others okay now uh for external conflict we have man against man so it is a type of conflict where one character in the story has a problem with one or more of the other characters maybe from protagonist to antagonist and vice versa. And then we have man against society. It is a type of conflict where a character has a conflict or a problem with some element of society, like the school, the law, the accepted ways of uh, doing things and so on. Then another one here is man against nature. Uh, it is a type of conflict where a character has a problem with some natural happening or some uh, course of nature like snowstorm, typhoon, avalanche, uh, earthquake, COVID-19, okay? And any elements common to nature, okay? So for, for internal conflict, uh, uh, that is uh, man against himself. Problem of the character against himself, man against himself. That is something internal. And then another element here is the point of view. Now, uh, the point of view is the angle from which the story is told. So we have uh, three types. We have first person point of view. Okay. The, in here, the story is told by the protagonist or any of the characters who interacts closely with the protagonist or other characters uh, using pronouns uh, of the first person, I, me, we, and others. Okay. And then stream of consciousness. This is the, the story is told. In here, the story is told so that the reader feels as if they are inside the head or inside the body of one character and knows all their thoughts and reactions. Okay. And then another one, third person uh, omniscient. Okay. So the narrator here tells the story from an all-knowing point of view. So he can move from character to character, event to event, having free access to the thoughts, feelings, and motivation of his characters. And he introduces information where and when he chooses, okay? So these uh, are how the story is being told. And then theme, uh, fiction should have theme. Now the theme is the controlling idea or the central insight of the story. So it is the author's uh, underlying meaning or main idea that he is trying to convey. 
Now, the T may be the author's thoughts about the topic or view of human nature. So, so what is the theme? Okay, so uh, is it, uh, what is the theme? Is it a love story? Is it, uh, uh, is it horror, adventure? Um, is it about family, about life? Okay. So it is the main idea that the authors uh, is trying to convey, okay? So these are the uh, elements of uh, fiction. So we have the setting, we have the characters, we have the plot, we have the uh, point of view, we have the conflict, and we have the theme, okay? Now, uh, before I end, I would like to share with you uh, a quote from Dr. Seuss. According to him, the more that you read, the more things you will know, and the more that you learn, the more places you'll go. Because literature, according to Northrop Rye, uh, literature speaks the language of the imagination and the study of literature is supposed to train and improve the imagination. Okay, so uh, thank you for uh, uh, attending our virtual class for this morning. Keep safe everyone and God bless us all. Thank you. Mom.